All right, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to be talking about upgrading BI tools and SQL Server reporting services. Uh, I'm Paul Turley. I'm a BI architect and mentor with SolidQ, and I'm joined here by Jim Miller, who is one of my associates at, at SolidQ. And uh, this is the continuation of our series about upgrading BI projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to jump in and talk about business intelligence tools. Now, there are a number of tools and applications that are installed with SQL Server 2012 and SQL Server 2014 that are used to uh, create and manage business intelligence projects. Of course, SQL Server Management Studio is used for all kinds of things, uh, not only managing and ad administering your server, but as well as authoring queries, scripting objects, and it's an important tool to use in the BI realm. If you're new to BI but may have experience with relational SQL Server, know that uh, Management Studio will also connect to instances of analysis services, both multidimensional and tabular, uh, as well as reporting services for uh, managing some objects and integration services now. So it's, it's, uh, it's a very, very uh, important tool in the BI realm. SQL Server Data Tools for BI is installed with the client tools with SQL Server. Uh, and also available as a separate download if you choose to use a newer version of Visual Studio. So if you've installed the client tools for SQL Server 2014, you get the Visual Studio shell uh, that's based on Visual Studio 2012 with the, the appropriate SSDT BI add-in to build your BI projects. But then if you're using Visual Studio 2013 or 2014, you'll need to download and install the appropriate add-ins. And those are pretty easy to find online. Um, the uh, analysis service is multidimensional, the analysis service is tabular, and reporting services projects, and as well as integration services, let's not leave that important uh, project type uh, and technology out, are all managed and, and created with the SSDT uh, 4BI add-in. I, I also put uh, Excel 2013 add-ins on this um, slide because if you are developing uh, analysis services tabular projects, Excel is actually your cube browser now. So it's an important tool to install. And um, some of the BI add-ins that are now part of the Power BI suite um, are actually based on SQL Server technologies and kind of joined at the hip with SQL Server. And we're, we, we're in an age now where there really is kind of this, this gray area between SQL Server and Office and SharePoint. Those are all products that work together. So, so uh, we, uh, they're all kind of cousins and, and products that work together. So, uh, as I said, the SQL Server Data Tools and, and Visual Studio are kind of have this symbiotic relationship. If you just install the client tools, then you get what you need to manage BI projects. Um, but there are some added capabilities like version control that you would get with, with a retail copy of Visual Studio. All right, well, let's talk about upgrading report projects. So I wanted to start with kind of a roadmap of where we've been with reporting services and where the product is now. So we step back and look at when reporting services was introduced uh, circa 2003, 2004 and preview moving to RTM. Uh, it was really introduced with some basic capabilities as an add-in for SQL Server 2000. Separate add-in, you had to install Visual Studio separately to get bids, to be able to author reports. Um, great tool, and it used um, IIS as the web manager, the, the, the web service that uh, reporting services sat on top of. In 2005, uh, BIDS was a client tool that was installed with the product. We saw the introduction of a tool called Report Builder and Semantic Models, which was different from RDL-based reports, um, and we're going to talk about that uh, here pretty quick. And then we saw some added features that I won't go into. In 2008, a lot of new uh, features added, new chart types, new visuals. Uh, the the Tablix uh, replaced the table, matrix, and list as uh, a more advanced way to um, consume data and group it. And essentially, when you added a, a table or you added a matrix, you were adding an instance of the Tablix, and then certain properties were, were automatically set by the uh, by the designer. We also saw the introduction of Report Builder 2.0, which 
was not the same thing as Report Builder 1.0. And, and uh, uh, early on, it was decided that Report Builder 1.0 and the original semantic models would be deprecated eventually. And Report Builder 2 was the introduction of a more self-service, more business user-focused design tool for reporting services. And then we've seen the continuation of that with the introduction of Report Builder 3.0 um, with uh, 2008 R2, and then that endures through 2012 and 2014. A lot, of, a lot of new capabilities were also introduced in 2008 R2. So it's important to note now that um, Report Builder 1 and the, um, the old Report Builder semantic models are now deprecated and will no longer be supported. Um, and then in 2012, we saw the introduction of the SSDT add-in that uh, could be added to newer versions of Visual Studio and the SSDT for BI add-in. So hopefully that will kind of help frame our discussion as we move forward a little bit. You can upgrade reporting services much like other components, um, either using an in-place upgrade or a side-by-side -side upgrade. In-place meaning that we have one instance of SQL Server and we're using the install center to upgrade that instance. And when everything is said and done, you will have one upgraded instance. Um, and there's no back button. There's no go back plan. Um, that's, that's a commitment to, to move forward to the new version. As opposed to a side-by-side -side upgrade where we leave the old instance in place. So let's say that we're moving from SQL Server 2005 to uh, 2014, you're still going to have that instance of SQL Server 2005 with all of the features and services that were part of the original instance. And so a little bit of a safety net there, but uh, it's, it's less of a commitment, shall we say, to, to do that. So we can upgrade um, from SQL Server 2005 Service Pack 4. So make sure that you're patched up to SP4. Uh, if you're on SQL Server 2005 before you upgrade, and then, of course, every version of SQL Server since then. And, uh, yes? Yeah, Paul, if you're uh, using SharePoint integrated mode, does the, is the in-place upgrade any more complicated, or is that the same as using native mode? I'm glad you ask. Um, and, and, and the simple answer is no, it's the same, because reporting services is reporting services. So when it's integrated with SharePoint, SharePoint's another layer that sits on top of your solution, but it, it consumes reporting services. Yeah. And when reporting services is configured, it has to be configured to, to support SharePoint integration, but it's still the, 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 the reporting services service, it's still the web service endpoints, it's still okay. all the same components, so the upgrade really is the same experience. Okay. <clears throat> so migrating from Reporting Services 2005, uh, first thing to note is that, um, that Reporting Services no longer requires IIS. And this was always a big effort when um, configuring Reporting Services in 2000 and 2005 was setting up the web server. In 2008, that was no longer necessary. So if you're moving from 05, know that you, you don't have to configure IIS and it won't be used moving forward. It actually uses the HTTP.sys service, which is actually part of Windows Server now. It was introduced in Windows Server 